Given that we have clear legal grounds and that we are just waiting for the publication of this law before the possible breach of EU law becomes a reality, the Commission today empowered me, in agreement with President Juncker, to send a letter of formal notice once the law on the ordinary courts organization has been published. And we will give the Polish authorities one month to reply from the date this letter is sent. The European Union has filed legal action against one of its own members, Poland, saying the right-wing government is undermining the country's courts. Protests erupted after Poland's president gave the justice minister the power to appoint lower court judges. The EU responded by putting Poland on notice and sending a list of questions about the new law to Warsaw. If the EU is not satisfied with the answers, Polish officials would be summoned before the European Court of Justice. Well, joining me now from Warsaw is Dominik Tarczynski. He's a Polish MP with the ruling Law and Justice Party and sits on the European Affairs Committees uh, and joins me now from Warsaw. Good to have you with us. So uh, the EU has launched legal action against Poland. Warsaw Thank has a month to respond. How will you respond? Well, we're going to respond legally, obviously. We have a treaty which is very clear about our decisions and our reforms. These reforms were very well known to the people during the campaign. And we were elected as a party, which is first party in history, which was elected without need of coalition. So we had a huge support for our reforms. We have a huge support right now. Out of 10 people in Poland are absolutely supporting our reforms. And very important is that Mr. Timmermans, who in fact attacked Poland, never mentioned any of these paragraphs of these reforms of this bill. Well, the critic, so critics are saying your reforms are unconstitutional. unconstitutional. No, the EU is saying they're unconstitutional. And when you I say think, you've and got... I'm very worried about it. When you say you've got support from the Polish people, you had tens of thousands of people out on the streets protesting against these changes. Which means that democracy in Poland are well, we are all good. People can protest, people can say we do not agree with that. And this is the part of the society which probably did not vote for law and justice. So I'm happy that no one is shooting uh, these protesters as they used to be shot by previous government. And previous government used to say that nothing's happened because they used a rabbit bullets. So this is reality in Poland now. And According to the Constitution, I would love to read out Article 180.5 of Polish Constitution to, to you, to Mr. Timmermans, which is very clear. The judges can be retired if the, the system itself, the court system, is changed. So the structure of the courts is changed and they can be retired. Obviously, okay, they will but, keep but, their wages. But what you've got so now is a situation where home. the justice minister now has the power to unilaterally replace the chief justices of the lower courts. What is that if it's not undermining judicial independence? Thank you very much for this question, which is uh, very important because this is not true. In Germany or in Sweden or in Denmark or in other European countries, Minister of Justice appointing the judges for the Supreme Court. And this is obviously pro-European. And this is obviously um, very okay with the European law. In Poland, we're going to have a minister and then we're going to have a national uh, council of judges and then the courts. So it's not the minister who is appointing the judges. That's another example that Mr. Tinemans do not know the bill. He never wrote about it. He never read it. He, he, he was the one who really got the message from Polish opposition and he's trying to tell us about the rule of law. And this is very important. He's not coming from the country where tribunal court exists. Can you believe that? And he was not even elected in a democratic uh, elections. He doesn't have the mandate to tell us what to do. OK, but, but why is the Law and Justice Party trying to exert control over the judiciary? Because some observers say the party is trying to move Poland away from liberal democratic model of government, more towards uh, a populist form of corporate nationalism. What do you say to that? Well, you know, some people say that not only uh, Polish government trying to take away Poland from European Union, but some of them say that they want, we want to take Poland from solar system. They can say whatever they want. Obviously, even the most stupid things can be told, and we are absolutely open for the discussion. I'm a lawyer. I'd like to explain to everyone 
each one of the paragraphs in our bill. First of all, I'd like to tell you why we started this work on this reform. First of all, because we had a judges which were drunk, killing people, driving drunk. We had a people, and we still have a judges, who are stealing things from the shops. And we cannot really put them on trial. You see, the three powers in democracy should be equal. Well, Me, well, as a member of the parliament, can be, I can be put on trial. Drunk, drunk, I can lose my mandate. Drunk killing judges seems but to be a problem judges, with your judges. But judges, this is important. R rather but, than a problem with the, uh, the, the system of, 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 of trying to replace them uh, summarily. Well, the very important for Polish people, for Polish nation, is the balance of three powers. And as I said, as a member of the parliament, I can be put in on, on the trial, I can lose my mandate, people cannot elect me. In case of judges, there is no law. They are above the law at the moment, and they are not responsible for their actions. I'm not saying only about driving drunk uh, uh, judges, about stealing, about really terrible and horrible uh, decisions in the courts they are above the law at the moment they are higher than the members of the parliament higher than the parliament and it's unacceptable three powers are equal in very major democracy this is what we promised during the campaign this is why we've been elected this is what we're going to do and we're going to keep our word which was given to the polish nation can i ask you this but you didn't get all the measures that you wanted because your president, President Duda, vetoed some of those measures. Was that a surprise to you? Well, it was a little bit of surprise, but this is not our president in a way that uh, he's not the president of law and justice. But he's seen he's as widely being he's widely so seen as being aligned who, to your party, though, isn't he? I mean, many expected him just to toe the line and sign was, sign them into law. And they were wrong. And they were wrong. I'm very happy that they have to say, we are sorry, we were wrong. He is the president of Poland. He used his constitutional law. And that's fine. That, that, that accords to our constitution. So there is nothing unconstitutional. He's, he vetoed uh, two of, uh, out of three um, um, uh, bills. And uh, now we're waiting for his proposition. I'm very happy that the Polish democracy and constitution is respected. That was one of his laws constitutional rights he used that that's fine we're going to wait for his um for his propositions but we're not going to resign from the reforms we promised that that's what uh, president promised during his campaign i, do, I don't think that they are going to they, they, they're going to be much different from from our okay. proposition i hope so so let's wait he says the proposition will be ready within two months uh, if you push forward with these reforms it's obviously going to put you on a collision course with the EU. You've said in a previous interview that the EU can't just kiss Poland on the forehead like uh, Jean-Claude Juncker used to kiss Donald Tusk. Uh, what does that mean? Are you happy that Poland might end up being marginalized in the EU? <laughs> marginalized, you, this is your opinion or fact? Well, I'm asking you because you were saying uh, that there were questions being asked about whether Poland would leave the EU. So you are wrong. You are wrong. We are. So, so, you, 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 so okay, you want to stay so in the you, EU, you, but you, you see Poland this may is your end opinion, up, I'll if tell you continue you. on this, Poland could end up being taken uh, before the European Court of Justice and fined or even losing its voting rights in Europe. And I'm just asking you, how worried are you by that scenario? Okay, so Poland made up somewhere um, outside EU, which is not true. Uh, I might end up as a millionaire. I can win the lottery tomorrow. Many things made up, made happen, but it's not, it has nothing to do with reality. First of all, we are not marginalized because I'm the, um, I'm the one of the, I'm the member of the um, European Council. 46 countries now supported Polish government. We had a voting. They tried to put us on monitoring and they and, and most of the countries voted supporting Polish government not only the European Union but Council of Europe itself larger body than uh, European Union that, not only that we we have a Visegrad group who is supporting us we held we had many partners who said we're not going to vote against it you know if anyone would try to put any sanction against Poland they need 100% votes 
Hungary, Czechs and others, they already said, no, we're not going to support it because it is not right. We have the right to discuss it. We have the right to put our reforms and we have a right to prove it that they are right and correct and accord to our constitution. As I said, I'd like to have essential discussion. I'd like to discuss about the paragraphs, not about political opinions like um, from uh, Mr. Timmermans or Juncker. I think Mr. Juncker has his own problems he should be focused on and political opinions are not correct. I think the most important now for European Union is to be very tight, to be together. Brexit was very bad decision. Well, bad for the um, for the European uh, and Union. That, that's, not exactly for the why, who decided that's exactly that they want why to leave. so many people are worried about the EU's cohesion because of the position that Poland has taken. Uh, Franz Timmermans has invited Polish ministers to talks in Brussels. Is Warsaw open to dialogue? Are you going to go to Brussels and have a chat with him? We are very open for the discussion. I already had a chance to discuss many things with Mr. Timmermans in the Council of Europe. When I asked him very essential, essential questions, he wasn't able to answer. And I'd like to mention that Mr. Timmermans was absolutely crushed with, crushed with the last election. His Labour Party was absolutely marginalized. So what kind of democracy he's trying to prove to Poland? What kind of mandate he's got to tell us what to do? We've been elected as the first party in the newest history of Poland, which doesn't need the coalition. Never happened. And now we have huge support. Obviously, the Warsaw and the protests and the people who are on the streets are listened. We are very open for the discussion, but we're not going to resign okay. from the promise, from the reforms which we promised. Dominic, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for speaking with us. Uh, appreciate your time. Dominic Tuchinski there. Pleasure.